What's up guys, it's RevJ again. Last week I did the sort of non-standard video of me going to the float tanks to float Milwaukee. Had a pretty good time with that, very relaxing, a lot of fun, definitely one of the more unique things I've done. Uh, and so for this week we've got something else that's a little unusual. Uh, in this case it's an unboxing, but not unboxing something typical. If you look at the GoPro footage I got right here, you'll see that we are actually unboxing a kilt from sportkilt.com. Uh, now, just a little quick background real quick. The reason we are doing this, uh, I've worn a kilt for 15 or so years. Uh, started as a holiday thing, and then it be, kind of became a heritage thing. Um, I'm Scottish mostly. Uh, Clan tartan is very important. Now, uh, that basically means your family set of colors. You have a coat of arms, you have all that, but then back in the day, you had specific plaids, or we called them tartans, uh, that distinguish one group from another back in sort of the tribal days or clan days. Uh, now, for the majority of the years, I've been wearing this uh, right here. Boom. And I'm Clan McGregor. I should probably explain that. This, however, is not the Clan McGregor Tartan. Uh, this is like a sort of wool blend, and I've had this for the better part of 15 years. This is actually homemade, believe it or not. Uh, and it's still in very good condition. It's got all the right pleats and stuff like that. However, it doesn't have a lot of the traditional hardware. Uh, I had a small spore in, which is sort of the crotch cover pouch thing uh, a while back. Currently, I've got uh, some minx tails on this. And yeah, I'm fine with fur. This is vintage fur, but I, fur doesn't bother me. And so we went with sportkilt.com and sportkilt does a lot of the competition kilts for the Highland Games uh, competitors, stuff like that. They do uh, like some of the utility kilts, which you've seen some guys wear. Uh, the guys from Flux Design here in Milwaukee, they were on a TV show a while back, he rocks a kilt. Um, and I generally wear mine partially during the holidays and partially uh, for formal events. I actually do when I do marriages, because I am a real reverend. A lot of people, you don't believe that, but I am a real reverend. Uh, when I do marriages, I actually do them in my kilt. I did one uh, this past fall. So. This is out, we can unbox this. Let's go to the GoPro here and start to pop this open. Okay, so there is the contents, there we go. We've got uh, the socks right on top here. Um, these are just something good to have. It's they're cheap, they're better than hockey socks. You wear them with boots, stuff like that. Not real important, just white socks. Move those out of the way. I've got a card here that says, what does it say? Uh, license to kilt. And I'll just hold that up here so you guys can see it if the glare isn't too much. Uh, it says license to kilt. On the back, it's got a, uh, we hope you love your new sport kilt. It's got care instructions, fitment instructions, uh, and some other things. It actually has a, a little note here about the kilt hose, which are the socks, uh, and then something called flashes, which I actually didn't buy, but they are a color matched or a tartan matched, a um, little flag almost that, uh, that you wear on your sock. In a very complicated way, it's sort of like gang colors for Scottish people, except that we used to kill each other with swords and horses and then gut each other, and it was fucking brutal, but kind of awesome. You guys have seen Braveheart, I don't need to explain this. Next thing in the box, i uh, probably move my knife, that's not relevant anymore. I've got, what is this? Oh, that's cool, a little sticker here. It says, Freedom Sport Kilt. It's actually like a gold leaf sticker. You guys know I like gold, gonna have to put that on something here. Uh, we've got the kilt itself, and this here is the Clan McGregor Tartan. Now, McGregor actually does have a couple different tartans. Uh, some tartans had what's called like a natal tartan versus a dress or versus a formal. This is pretty much the standard accepted um, uh, tartan for McGregor. And it's got the sport kilt logo here. And just right away, as you guys can see, this has... It's a Velcro closure. They have like a little uh, sort of relief, Velcro relief in the back here. This is one of the things that actually makes it like the loaded kilt, and that's the belt loops. You've got the leather closures here, the fringe edge, basically a lot of the little more traditional details that get omitted on cheap kilts. This material right away is really nice. Um, it's a lot lighter than what you might expect. Traditionally, kilts are actually like a batted wool, and they're heavy, and they absorb moisture, and they can be really itchy. Most modern kilts are not made from that material, so they go with this. And I'll have to look at what exactly it is. It's a, it's a blend of some sort. I'm sure it's got poly something in it, but it's sweat resistant. It's easy to care for. Like I said, this is the company who makes them for a lot of the Highland Games athletes, uh, the guys who do the caber toss, chucking a telephone pole in the air, basically. Uh, so it's gotta be good for that. Now, if we unfurl it here just a little bit, try to keep it under the camera. 
You can see here it's got a medium length on it. This is a 22 and a half length. You want it to go just to the knee height. On me, this should be good. The fringed edge, like I said there, nice. It's got folded double seams. A little bit of a setback here. I don't know why this is in here. I think it's just to, so it drapes nicely. Um, you've got, like I said, the little buckle here. And I'll hold that up here so you guys can see it here. A nice little buckle on there. It is let's get it here. There we go. If we lay it out there, it's got the nice flat front. The cross over here in the front where it folds and comes across the front of your legs. Um, it's pleated on the sides, belt loop like I said, and as you see here when you fold it over or flip it over, again you see the leather, two nice leather buckles, the belt loops for ease of wear, a little bit of expansion here because they are meant to fit different waist sizes, uh, and then the beautiful pleat work. And this is one of the things that you'll really notice uh, between a really crappy kilt and a really nice kilt is the crispness of these sewn in seams. If you guys have never done sewing, and I know a lot of guys haven't, it's actually really, really good to know in life. But if you haven't done it, um, pleats are really, really hard. They are really hard to fold in, get symmetrical, and sew in. And if you look at the sheer number of pleats on these, to get, look at this, the lines are perfectly straight. The match is perfectly straight. You can't abuse the tartan. They did a really nice job with this. I really like the feel of this material. It's got a really nice weight to it. Um, so let's go ahead, actually there's some details on the inside here, what does this say? It's got a nice thick, look at that, nice thick waistband, which I really like uh, for my back because I don't like thin seamed waistbands with cords. Uh, size large, sport kilt, made in the USA. These are made in California as far as I know, so it's nice to support a USA made company, especially for textiles. That's really not common these days, so it's really nice to have that. This and this, it's all part of one thing. This is called a sporin. And Basically what a sporin is, is when you wear a kilt, it doesn't have pockets. Now, yes, they can actually sew pockets into these now, but it, it, it fucks up the whole look. Um, the design of this, basically, you drape it in the front of you, uh, kind of covers your crotch region generally, and it acts as a place for storage, cell phone, wallet, that kind of stuff. And you have the belt strap. This is designed to hook on to your uh, kilt, and that actually holds this down in the correct position. The other reason you wear a sporin is that generally you don't wear anything under a kilt. If you do it the right way, if you've got the balls to wear a kilt, you should have the balls to hang out of a kilt. And this, when you sit down, pushes the kilt down, creating a covering. It's more gentlemanly. Um, the very old style great kilts, which is actually about nine and a half yards of pleated material, those those didn't you didn't wear with a sporin, and uh, and your junk would be hanging out a lot of times. Those were actually only held on with a belt or with a tie around the waist, and just the material. No sewn-in pleats, nothing like that. Uh, let's take a look at this here before I get too far off track. It's nice, decent quality leather here. A little bit of a shine to it. It's got sort of a Celtic knot there uh, embroidered into it, or actually uh, pressed into it here. You've got three tassels. These I'm not a fan of. Just to let you know, I don't like tassels on anything. Um, those are actually going to come off, and I'm going to replace those with my minx tail from the original uh, partial sporin covering that I had over here. So I'm going to put the minx tails on this. It's got this here, this spike. It's actually really a nice, nice weight, solid metal, thin chain, but not bad. Um, this is the traditional closure. A lot of these have snaps on them these days, or a buckle or something like that. This here, the spike, this is the old school, and I think it looks the best. It's kind of a unique look, a little bit of an accessory. Um, you flop this open here, there you go. You can see it's a full grain leather on the inside there, and might be hard for the camera here, but you've got the internal pouch there. Flip over the back here, you've got the little uh, sort of clasp with the attachment points for the belt. I've used a leather strap before, like it's just a thin cording. This is more of a belt with a traditional chain. Not sure how I feel about the chain yet. Uh, I like it, but I don't like sort of the chrome shininess. Maybe I'll coat it, maybe I'll dip it black, I'm not sure, we'll figure that out. But for right now, that's what we've got. Overall, guys, I just wanted to do quick unboxing on something sort of non-traditional, something you guys probably haven't seen. I'm really happy with the quality of this kilt from Sport Kilts. The tartan is correct. Uh, the leather quality is very nice, not insanely expensive. This whole setup, I think, runs around $200, $225. So that's really it, guys. 
rather unusual unboxing, something I know most of the YouTubers you follow aren't gonna bust out a kilt unboxing. Uh, but that's what I've got here. Happy with the quality of it, got the socks, happy with the quality of the Sporin. Couple little things I'm gonna do to it to make it my own, but that's just kinda how I do it. So if you guys want more weird stuff like this, please feel free to let me know. Uh, if you haven't checked out the Float Milwaukee video from the Isolation Chank, check that out. I've also got uh, the Bucks 1.5 review up from a couple weeks ago. Lots more sneaker reviews, lots more automotive content coming. Spring eventually will get here and we will have lots more fun car and truck stuff. We've got a lot of ideas coming and a lot of big fab projects in the works. I know some of you guys will be looking forward to that. This already went longer than I intended it to. It was meant to be a simple unboxing and I got into the history and everything else. That's it for now, guys. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. It means a lot to me. I take all of your subscriptions very seriously and very personally, so I really do appreciate that. Leave comments in the box below. Check out the other videos. I'm going on too long, guys. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, guys.